Hi everyone, I'm Claire from the Kitchy Kitchen and today I'm going to show you how to make Mexican hot chocolate cupcakes with chocolate coconut ganache. I'm so excited. It sounds amazing. I love chocolate as everyone knows. Plus, you know, I'm not a sociopath so I love chocolate. And this is one of my favorite recipes. It's really basic, really simple. And the great thing about it is you can do a lot of little things to kind of make it your own and add a lot of extra flavor, which is what I'm doing today. So it's a pretty basic cupcake recipe. I have my dries, I have my wets, I have some eggs and oil as sort of where all the fat's coming from. So basically what I have in front of me is three cups of all-purpose flour, three cups of white sugar, which I know that's a very aggressive amount of sugar, but they are indeed cupcakes. They're not gonna be very good for you, but they will taste amazing. So three cups of sugar. I have a cup and a half of my unsweetened cocoa powder. So this is the chocolate, right? This is the only thing giving it a chocolate flavor. So you wanna make sure to use the best unsweetened cocoa powder you can find. I really like Valrona. It's super rich, has an amazing flavor. But once again, use the best you can find because this is the key to this whole recipe. And then I have about three quarters cup of vegetable oil. I have a half cup of sour cream, which gives it a little bit of richness and tang. A cup of milk. For my spices, this is what makes it Mexican hot chocolate, I have one teaspoon of cinnamon and about a quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper. So the cayenne has real heat to it. If you don't like spicy, nix it. But if you love spicy, add more. However, I will say these are moderately spicy cupcakes. I then have a couple tablespoons, or teaspoons rather, of vanilla extract. Uh, once again, vanilla, you can kind of add as much as you like. I kind of like overdoing it with the vanilla, so that's why there's a few teaspoons. I then have a tablespoon of baking soda, a teaspoon and a half of baking powder, three eggs, and then I have a cup and a half of warm coffee. So the coffee actually adds a lot of really great flavor here. I really feel like it adds an exclamation point to chocolate. So it makes chocolate taste extra chocolatey, it's really delicious, and I just love the combination of coffee and chocolate. But if you don't want that, you can always do just plain water instead. But plain water tastes like plain water, so I definitely vote going with the coffee. So first things first, I'm actually gonna mix all of my dry ingredients together because I don't want any pockets of anything. Can you imagine biting into a cupcake and finding a pocket of baking soda? Gross! So no, you do not wanna do that. So the way to make sure that doesn't happen is you just mix all of your dry ingredients together first. And you can do this by whisking it together or you can also use, what are those called? A um, sifter. But I like whisking it because it, once again, lazy and it's easy. So I'm putting all my dry ingredients in here first. In go the spices. And then in goes the cocoa powder. Ooh. I might have to add that a little bit at a time. Oh my gosh, it already smells so strong right now from the cinnamon and cayenne pepper. Okay, so once again, this is about sort of layering in my flavor. I just want everything to have a really kind of rich depth to it. And so by having things like a really amazing cocoa powder, adding cinnamon, adding cayenne pepper, using coffee, lots of vanilla, the sour cream, all of those things, it really does add a lot to the cupcakes. It gives them a really interesting kind of background. It makes them just not like everyday cupcakes. And the cool thing too is that if you wanted to sort of make these your own, you don't have to use the cinnamon and cayenne pepper. You could add orange zest, you could add a little bit of bourbon instead of the vanilla. You can really play around with it and make these your own. Okay, that's sufficiently mixed together. I feel good about that. So now I'm going to get started on actually mixing everything and getting my batter going. So first I'm gonna to mix together the sugar and the eggs. And so the thing about putting the sugar and the eggs together first is it sort of creates this foundation so everything sticks to it. So I'm gonna to whip together the sugar and the eggs until it actually creates a ribbon. And you'll see, I'll show you what that means, but basically it get, makes it very aerated and it creates this really kind of lovely effect. It allows the eggs to really do their job well, which is to kind of hold everything together. And the reason why I'm cracking the eggs on the surface like this rather than on the edge of the bowl is because I do not want shell to get crushed up into the egg and then it sort of goes into the bowl. This way, by cracking it on the actual surface, it keeps it so that there's no shell going into the egg. 
it gives me a little bit more control. All right, let's get that mixing. Okay, so this is ribboning. Ribboning is basically when the liquid comes down and it kind of does this really pretty layer. It, kind of, it holds its shape pretty well. All right, so now that I have my eggs and sugar whipped together, I'm going to add the, the vanilla extract and then the oil. There we go. I'm gonna mix that together just to get it integrated. looking good. And then I'm going to add the sour cream. There we go. Very nice. So now it comes to adding sort of my wet ingredients and my dry ingredients. And the reason why you're supposed to do this a little bit at a time, so you alternate, so some dry, some wet, some dry, some wet, is because you do not want to overwhelm the batter. If I were to take all my dry ingredients and pop it into the batter right now, it would take a very long time for it to fully integrate. And because of that, it'll overwork some of the flour. So you end up getting kind of gummy, dense cupcakes, which are just not fun for anybody. And then ditto with the liquid. If I just poured all the liquid in, it would be soupy and slosh around and make a really big mess. It wouldn't actually kind of get mixed in very well for, once again, quite a long time. So by doing alternating sort of dry, wet, dry, wet, it allows it to mix together in a timely fashion and a lot quicker than you'd expect. So I guess let's start with my dry ingredients. So I'm just gonna do like a third of it first. And I'm definitely gonna do this on low. The reason being, not only do I not want the flour to get overworked and release all that gluten, I also have a lot of cocoa powder in here and it has a habit of just sort of whoosh going out of the bowl. So this way it doesn't do that. And you just want to mix it together until everything kind of has the same wetness and color. So you don't want to go much further than that. So now I'm going to start pouring in a little bit of the coffee. So I'm going to do about half of the coffee. All right, and now I'm going to add a little bit more of my dry. other half of my coffee. And basically, I'm just gonna keep going back and forth with the milk as well until it is all mixed together. All right, so I've alternated my ingredients. It is all mixed together. It looks beautiful. So the thing here is that this is actually a very liquid batter. A lot of times you'll see cupcakes or muffin batter and it's scoopable. You can scoop it with an ice cream scoop. This is not the case. This is gonna be a thinner batter, but it's fine because you end up getting a really light cake with a lot of really rich flavor. So in order to make this less of a mess, I'm gonna use a ladle and I'm going to put it into my prepared cupcake tin right here. So I have my liners in and I've sprayed down the edges so it won't stick if the cupcake explodes out and wants to go along the edges. All right, so this is gonna require a little bit of eyeballing and warning, I'm probably gonna make this very messy, but here I go. And I wanna fill this up so it's about three quarters of the way full. These aren't gonna be huge, giant, big, fluffy cupcakes. They're gonna perk up really nicely, but you do wanna fill them pretty full. And I have my oven preheating to 350. There we go. Oh no, it's a mess. <laughs> I can clean up the pan afterwards. All right, there we go. So 
So my cupcakes are ready to go in the oven, 350 degrees for about 20 to 25 minutes. And the trick is you can do the toothpick trick to see if they're done, or you can touch the tops. And if it bounces back, it's ready. And if it's dented, then it needs a couple more minutes. All right, so the cupcakes are done. They've cooled, so that's why I'm holding them like this. And they bounce back perfectly, so they're perfectly done. They smell amazing. And to top them, I'm going to do a dark chocolate coconut ganache. I think this is gonna be so lovely, and it's kind of sexy too. It's different than a frosting, so it looks really pretty on the cupcakes, especially if you get a little bit of dripping happening. And there's only three ingredients. It's super simple to put together. Basically, I have three ounces of dark chocolate, and once again, you wanna use the best you can find. I am using uh, Schaffenberg, but you could use Godiva, you could use any other kind of Ghirardelli, whatever, um, that you like, because this is really the core here. This is the flavor that really comes through. I have a third cup of coconut milk. This is canned coconut milk, it's full fat. And then to get that really viscous kind of texture, I have half of a tablespoon of corn syrup. So first things first, I am going to take my coconut milk and I'm just gonna heat it up because this is what basically is gonna let us melt the chocolate. If you wanted to, you could just mix everything together and melt it over a double boiler. But I like this, I don't really like using a double boiler for no real reason, it just sort of, I find it annoying. So I'm gonna let this come to a nice simmer and then pour it over my chocolate. It smells so good, I love coconut milk. And if you didn't wanna use coconut milk, you can actually use cream as well. Cream would work perfectly in this. All right, that's good, that's hot. Okay, so this is going over the chocolate. And this is where you can see it's really important to chop up your chocolate really finely ahead of time because otherwise it won't melt properly. I'm just gonna stir this around really lightly and then I'm going to add the corn syrup. I'm just gonna use my finger because why not? All right. So I'm just gonna stir this until all the chocolate is fully melted and then that's it. I have my ganache. Beautiful. All right, that's it, it's so simple. So I'm gonna take my cupcakes, which are adorable in their golden wrappers, and all I'm gonna do is dunk them just like this, let it drip off a little bit, and the ganache is actually going to set. So it won't be completely wet and drippy if you let it sit and cool for about 10, 15 minutes. So cute. I don't know, there is something about melted chocolate that just looks decadent. It just is, there's a, a visceral reaction. Maybe it's just me, I don't know. Tell me in the comments, but I love chocolate and it being warm and gooey, it just makes it like I could drink it with a straw. <laughs> That's how I feel about it. Oh, those are heavenly looking. Okay, I, I'm gonna have one. Please don't judge me because it's covered in gooey chocolate. It will end up all over my face, but I'm going to do it. So cute. I don't know, is there a ladylike way to eat a cupcake? We'll find out. Answer is probably no. Okay. Yum. I love this. It's so simple, it's so rich. And I used really dark chocolate for my ganache, so it's just so intense. If you don't want it to have that bittersweet dark chocolate flavor, milk chocolate will work totally fine. But I love, love, love the flavor of dark chocolate. And I think that that's what makes these kind of more adult cupcakes. They have a sort of depth of flavor that is very special. So anyway, I'm really into this. These are mine. This is my plan for the evening, just eating a dozen cupcakes by myself. I hope you enjoyed watching. For more recipes like this one, check out my blog, thekitchykitchen.com.